Hey, super mamas. It's Dr. Joy here, and you are watching Delivering Joy MD TV. Welcome to Super Mama Sunday. Today, we are continuing our discussion on birth emergencies. These are rare emergencies that occur during birth that you need to be aware of. Today's birth emergency is umbilical cord prolapse. Umbilical cord prolapse. So grab somebody that's gonna be supporting you during your birth, sit back, relax, and let's talk about it. All right, super mamas. So the first thing I'm going to say, just like I said in every video in this playlist, is that birth emergencies do happen. And I'm not telling you these things to promote fear of the birthing space, but I am telling you these things to promote awareness so that you understand a little bit about these emergencies and so that you feel a little bit better equipped to ask questions, speak up for yourself, so that your birth supporters feel better equipped. So I don't want to promote fear of the birthing space for anyone or promote anxiety, but I do want you to be in the know because knowledge is power and when we know better we can do better so like i said today's birth emergency is umbilical cord prolapse so the umbilical cord is attached to the placenta and to the baby so it's kind of the go-between between between the placenta and the baby the placenta is attached to the mom's uterus the placenta receives oxygen and nutrients from the mom's blood and then delivers that through the umbilical cord to the baby so the placenta and umbilical cord are the baby's connection to the mama so that's why the umbilical cord is so important it's taking oxygen and nutrients to your baby and it's also getting rid of waste from the baby system, bringing it back to the placenta so that the placenta can dump that waste in the mom's blood and the mom can get rid of uh, that waste by exhaling carbon dioxide or urinating out um, proteins and ammonias or having bowel movements. So now that we understand how vitally important it is that this umbilical cord is working, let's talk about umbilical cord prolapse. So umbilical cord prolapse is actually when the umbilical cord comes through the cervix prior to the baby being born. Umbilical cord prolapse can happen at any birth actually, but risk factors for umbilical cord prolapse include having multiple babies. So if you have twins or triplets, uh, those umbilical cords, you have multiple umbilical cords that could potentially come through. And with twins, you can also have what we call malpresentation, meaning one of the twins is breached or one of the twins is lying sideways across the mom in a transverse position. Uh, so definitely higher risk for people who have multiple babies. Also, folks who have a malpresentation of their baby. So if your baby's breech or if it's laying across you in a transverse position, um, that can be a risk for the umbilical cord coming out because the head is not acting like a stopper at that cervix. So usually the head is right at the cervix and it kind of acts like a bottle stopper. But when the head is not right there applied to the cervix, the umbilical cord can potentially prolapse through. For moms who have a ton of amniotic fluid and the baby's floating and the head is not firmly applied to the cervix, umbilical cord prolapse is a risk which is one of the reasons why we try to make sure the baby's head is well applied to that cervix prior to performing an artificial um, breaking of your water where the, the doctor or the birth professional breaks your water. Usually we try to make sure that baby's head is already down there like a stopper prior to breaking uh, a mama's water if we're trying to perform an induction of labor. And of course, if the baby is floating and mom's water happens to break on its own at home, you know, certainly getting to the hospital is important um, because a cord prolapse can occur and if we're not monitoring the baby, we haven't seen the baby's heart rate, we may not know. When the water breaks, that can certainly be uh, an issue when water breaks at home or when 
the water is artificially broken, but certainly never more of an issue than when you have preterm rupture of membranes because that means the baby is still pretty small and can be in whatever position and the core has opportunity to prolapse that way. So certainly if you're preterm and your water breaks, getting to the hospital to have baby checked out, make sure the core is not prolapsing through is a good is a good idea. And it goes without saying that if you happen to go into preterm labor and your water breaks, that's also a concern for a core prolapse. So these are things that make it more risky. But as I said, it can occur in any birth. It could occur with artificial breaking of the water. It could occur with natural breaking of your water. So it's one of those things, it rarely occurs, but when it does occur, it is an emergency because when that core goes through the cervix, it's being squished. And so blood and oxygen and nutrients are not being taken to the baby. So it's very important that we relieve the pressure on that umbilical cord so that baby is continuing to get oxygen and nutrients and we can avoid any potential damage to the brain or even stillbirth. So diagnosing cord prolapse can be pretty interesting. So the only way to really diagnose it is to palpate or feel the cord coming out of the cervix. Usually, if you are laboring in a hospital, we're gonna do some exams. Even if you're laboring in a birthing center or you choose to labor at home, I think that it is important that when your water breaks that you do have an exam and you can decide whether or not that's for you or not. But I think that if your water breaks on its own, just a, a preliminary check, of either doing a cervical exam or putting the baby on the monitor for a little bit to make sure that the heart rate appears normal. In most cases of core prolapse, the first thing to change is going to be the baby's heart rate because like we said, that cord is compressed and so baby's not getting oxygen and that heart rate is gonna start doing some of the things we talked about in last week's video, which I'll link up here uh, in the cards and in the description box but certainly abnormal fetal heart rate tracing can occur with cord prolapse. So we are going to check and see if we can feel that cord um, with your permission. If uh, your nurse or nurse midwife or doctor checks your cervix and feels that that cord is prolapsing through, guess what? They're gonna be getting up close and personal with you for quite some time because what we have to do is try to push that cord back up and keep the pressure off of it until we can get the baby born. So if you are 10 centimeters dilated and you are ready to start pushing, then we're going to try to relieve the pressure on that cord in between your contractions and let and, and, and really coach you to push like your life depends on it. But if you are not 10 centimeters dilated, and let's say you're three or four centimeters dilated, the necessary course of action here is going to be an emergency C-section. And I've already linked the emergency c-section video to this video so that you can kind of take a look at that and think about that but the great thing is that Core prolapse only takes place in about one out of 300 births. So one in 300 is pretty good odds that you won't have a core prolapse. But if it happens, understand that this is an emergency because there is risk for stillbirth. So as I said, your new BFF, your labor nurse or your nurse midwife or your doctor is gonna be up close and personal, holding that cord up into the cervix until baby is born. So that means that if you have to proceed with the emergency C-section, then you want that hand there holding that cord. And that means they gotta get up on the bed with They're you. They're gonna be riding with you to the operating room with their hand still in the vagina. It's a little invasive, but it will save your baby's life. I have taken several rides on beds and we need to keep our hand there until the baby is born. So that means while the belly is being prepped, while the curtains are being put up and while another uh, doctor or surgeon is up there helping to um, birth baby with you so that we can keep the pressure off the cord and keep oxygen flowing to the baby. 
So it's a little weird, it's uncomfortable, it's scary, but if it happens, it is a true emergency. And in order to ensure your baby's receiving the proper amounts of oxygen and not at risk for uh, brain damage or stillbirth, it's one of those necessary things because quick delivery prevents bad outcomes. So just something to note about umbilical cord prolapse. Hope you are not the one in 300 first that it happens in, but if you are, now you know about it. So if you have questions or comments about umbilical cord prolapse, go ahead and post those in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a single Super Mama Sunday episode. I'll catch you next Sunday, Super Mamas. Peace.